Hi, welcome back to engineeringtalks.com. In this video, we'll go through the topic shear force and bending moment diagrams for a simply supported beam with a point load at the midpoint of the beam. So, happy learning and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe and press the bell icon. Let's see what is meant by a simply supported beam. A beam which is supported or resting freely on the supports at its both ends is known as a simply supported beam. A simply supported beam will have a hinge support at one end and a roller support at the other end like this. Here I have shown the simply supported beam subjected to a point load W acting at the midpoint that is at a distance of L by 2 from both the ends. Now due to this externally applied point load will have reactions at both the supports. So RA is the reaction at the end A due to the hinge support. Usually this hinge support will have two reactions that is one vertical reaction and one horizontal reaction. See here in this beam we don't have any other horizontal reactions. So the horizontal reaction due to this hinge support at the end A will be equal to zero. So here we have only a vertical reaction RA. Now at the end B we have a vertical reaction RB due to roller support. Roller support has only one reaction that is one vertical reaction and that is equal to RB. And these two reactions RA and RB will be equal to W by 2 each because we have a point load W acting at the midpoint of the B. So in order to support or resist this point load RA and RB will be equal to W by 2 each. So that the beam will be in equilibrium. Let's now find out the shear force and bending moment values acting along the length of the beam. Here we have a simply supported beam with a point load acting at the midpoint. We know that RA is equal to RB is equal to W by 2. Let's consider a section X at a distance of X meter from the end A. Let Fx be the shear force and Mx be the bending moment at this section. We know that in order to find out the shear force and bending moment values at this section, we have to consider either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Let's consider the left portion of the section. This is the left portion of the section. Here we have only one reaction force acting in the upward direction. We know that shear force is equal to the algebraic sum of the forces acting either on the left portion or on the right portion of the section. So, here the shear force will be equal to the algebraic sum of the forces acting on the left portion of the section and the resultant force acting on the left portion of the section is equal to this RA. And the shear force will be positive if the resultant force is in the upward direction when it is on the left side of the section and shear force will be uh, positive if the resultant force is in the downward direction if it is on the right portion of the section. So here we have considered the left portion of the section and the resultant force is acting in the upward direction. Therefore the shear force acting in the upward direction that is the resultant force acting in the upward direction on the left portion of the section is considered as positive. Therefore shear force is equal to positive in this case. This value of shear force that is plus W by 2 will be constant between the points A and C because between these two points we don't have any other point loads acting. Therefore the shear force between A and C will be equal to plus W by 2. It remains constant between the points A and C. Now in order to find out the variation of shear force between the points C and B we have to consider a section in between these two points. So let's consider this section x at a distance of x meter from the end A. Now let's consider the left portion of the section. On the left portion of the section we have one reaction force RA acting in the upward direction and one point load W acting in the downward direction and we know that forces acting in the upward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as positive and forces acting in the downward direction on the left portion of the section will be considered as negative. Therefore, the resultant of the forces acting on the left portion of the section will be equal to Ra minus W and this will, it will be equal to shear force and we know that Ra is equal to plus W by 2. 
Therefore, W by 2 minus W which will be equal to minus W by 2. Therefore, the shear force will be equal to minus W by 2 between the points C and B. So, we can understand that the shear force changes uh, from plus W by 2 to minus W by 2 at this point C because between the points A and C we have shear force is equal to plus W by 2 and between the points C and uh, B shear force is equal to minus W by 2. Therefore, this shear force has uh, changed its value from plus W by 2 to minus W by 2 at this point C. It will be clear to you when I uh, uh, show you how we can draw the shear force diagram. So, uh, at C, we have shear force changing from plus W by 2 to minus W by 2. Now, let us find out the bending moment values acting along the length of the beam. For that, let us consider a section X between the points A and C at a distance of X meter from the end A. Now, in order to find out the bending moment value acting at this section, we have to consider either the left portion or the right portion of the section. Let us consider the left portion of the section. Here we have a reaction force Ra acting in the upward direction and this uh, reaction force has the tendency to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction like this. This is the clockwise direction. So, it has the tendency to rotate the beam like this. Therefore, any moment in the clockwise direction on the left portion of the section is considered as positive. Therefore, the moment created by this reaction force will be positive and it will be equal to this Ra into perpendicular distance and Ra is equal to W by 2. Therefore, moment will be equal to W by 2 into x. Therefore, the bending moment value at this section is equal to plus W by 2 into x. Now, at the end A, x will be equal to 0. Therefore, Ma will be equal to W by 2 into 0 which will be equal to 0 and at uh, C, at the point C, we will have x equal to L by 2. Therefore, Mc will be equal to W by 2 into L by 2 which will be equal to WL by 4. Now, in order to find out the bending moment uh, values between the uh, points C and B, we have to consider a section between these two points. So, let us uh, consider a section at a distance of x meters from the end A. Now, let us consider the left portion of the section. Here we have uh, a reaction force Ra acting in the upward direction and a point low W acting in the downward direction. The bending moment at this section due to the support reaction Ra will be equal to Ra into x and it will be positive because this Ra has the tendency to rotate the beam in the clockwise direction and the value of the bending moment will be equal to Ra into perpendicular distance. Perpendicular distance is x. Therefore, Ra into x will be the moment created at this section due to the support reaction Ra. Now, the moment created at this section due to the point load will be this point load into the perpendicular distance. This is the perpendicular distance. So, this distance will be obtained by subtracting this L by 2 from the distance x. Therefore, this distance will be equal to x minus L by 2. And this um, uh, load, point load has the tendency to rotate the beam in the anti-clockwise direction. See, with respect to this section, we have to consider, okay. So, this load has the tendency to rotate the beam in the anti-clockwise direction and any anti-clockwise moment on the left portion of the section will be considered as negative. Therefore, this moment will be equal to minus W into x minus L by 2. Therefore, the moment created due to the point load W at this section will be equal to minus W into x minus L by 2. See here. Therefore, mx will be equal to plus Ra into x minus W into x minus L by 2. Now, Ra is equal to W by 2. So, we can substitute the value of Ra here. So, W by 2 x minus Wx plus WL by 2. We just have to uh, open the bracket and write it as uh, minus Wx and plus WL by 2. Now, Wx by 2 minus Wx will be minus Wx by 2. Therefore, WL by 2 minus Wx by 2. Now, at C, we will have uh, moment is equal to WL by 2 minus Wx by 2. X in the place of X, we will substitute L by 2. Therefore, W 
by 2 into L by 2 will be W L by 4. Therefore, W L by 2 minus W L by 4 will be equal to W L by 4 and at uh, B the moment will be equal to W L by 2 minus W by 2 into L because X will be equal to L at the point B. Therefore, W L by 2 minus W L by 2 which is equal to 0. Therefore, at the end A, we have moment equal to 0. At the end B, we have moment equal to 0. And at C, moment is equal to plus W L by 4. Let's draw the shear force diagram. For that, we have to draw the baseline first. This is the baseline. Now, we know that at this end A, shear force is equal to W by 2 and it is positive. Therefore, we will mark it using a vertical straight line above the baseline. Now, from this point to this point, that is between the points A and C, shear force remains equal to W by 2. Therefore, we will mark it using a horizontal straight line like this. Now, we know that between the points C and B, shear force is negative and its value is equal to minus W by 2. So, at this point C, shear force changes its sign from plus W by 2 to minus W by 2. So, we will mark this variation from plus W by 2 to minus W by 2 using a vertical straight line. Now, from this point to this point, shear force remains equal to minus W by 2. So, we will mark that using a horizontal straight line. This is the shear force diagram of a simply supported beam with a point load acting at the midpoint. Now you can shade these two regions and uh, mark it as positive and negative. Let's draw the bending moment diagram. For that we will mark the baseline first. Now between the points A and C bending moment variation is given by mx is equal to plus w by 2 into x. So, from this equation, it is clear that bending moment is proportional to the distance of the section from the end A, that is, it follows a straight line law and it is positive. So, we will mark it above the baseline. Now, at the end A, bending moment is equal to 0, and at the point C, bending moment is equal to plus WL by 4. So, this variation of the bending moment from 0 at uh, the end A to plus WL by 4 at uh, C can be shown using a straight line like this. Now between the points C and B, bending moment variation is given by WL by 2 minus WX by 2. Here also bending moment is proportional to the distance of the section from the end A. So it follows a straight line law here also. And at C we have bending moment is equal to WL by 4 and at B bending moment is equal to 0. So bending moment decreases from WL by 4 at C to 0 at B and this variation can be shown using a straight line like this. Now you can shade this region and mark it as positive. So this is the bedding moment diagram of a simply supported beam with a point load acting at the midpoint. So, this is the shear force diagram and this is the bending moment diagram of a simply supported beam with a point load acting at the midpoint. Please do like and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you.